And we are live. Hey guys, this is Ruben Dua from Dub's podcast, Connection Loop. I am on with Sam Freimer. And listen, we, we gotta get we gotta get into personal branding, man, because everything that I learned about branding, I have realized I have to relearn. <laughs> because branding is all about people like you and me now that are representing these things called companies. <laughs> and we're all using something called LinkedIn. So please give me a bio. and Please tell me as much as you know about branding in the next 20, 25 minutes. Yeah, definitely, definitely appreciate it, Ruben. Look, dude, you know, I grew up in a time, um, like I'm sure you did, where everything was about a resume. That's kind of all you had. That was, that was kind of your, your rap sheet. Um, but nowadays, when you're representing your company or your own personal brand, you got to do more than that. Uh, so LinkedIn's one of those primary platforms where, you know, it used to be like, hey, this is just, uh, you know, a networking space. But but now it's a lot more. You know, it's a place where you can launch your personal brand and you can grow your personal brand, which has many, many benefits. Um, you can help uh, grow your income doing a side hustle, you know. My nine to five, dude, is healthcare marketing, but my five to nine is resume rebuilds. And there's, there will be a time when there will be no more resumes. So you'll just have your personal brand out there and people will say, hey, you know, what's the scoop with Ruben Gill? You know, what's he doing? What, what's he all about? What's his skill set? You know, I got this role open on my team squad. I want to know if we can get Ruben in there. And that they'll go check out your LinkedIn profile, your other social profiles. Um, and see what you're all about in, in real time, and it stays updated. Wow, man. Well, it's it's funny that you should mention about resumes because I'm actually looking to hire a junior marketing specialist with 15 years of experience in HubSpot, and uh, you know I want to pay minimum wage. <laughs> Just kidding. We're gonna get into that because you have a massively viral LinkedIn post that got over 14,000 likes, 1,700 comments on how unreasonable people are when it comes to hiring, recruiting, resumes, talent. So we're, I want to get into that in a little bit. For sure. <laughs> so uh, tell me something. What, what would you say your catalyst for your space is? Like what was your kind of aha moment where you said, you know what, this is my purpose? Yeah, definitely. So it's, it's really funny. I got into you know, personal branding and resume rebuild by accident, you know, for as much knowledge there is there is out there about planning and, you know, and, and having your, your kind of vibe board and, and, you know, your daily routine. This was something that I really didn't plan. I did it initially pro bono work. You know, there's some companies around Boston that are laying off. I put up a LinkedIn post. I said, Hey, you know, no charge. If you just got laid off, Hey, I'll help you with your resume, which really turned into, I'll help you with your personal brand. Um, and that was, that was really where I cut my teeth. You know, I looked at dozens and then hundreds of resumes uh, and that kind of turned into a side hustle. But one thing I found is that people, for some reason, you know, even though it's something really important, people aren't getting up in the morning and going, hey, you know, hey, let me work on my resume today. Or, hey, let me work on my personal brand. It's not, it's not really framed like that. And I had a knack for it and I said, hey, you know, if this is some, some place where I can help people solve their pain, and make a couple bucks at the same time, that to me is one of those proverbial win-wins. Mm. Well, I think what's really interesting about this is that a couple of things happened here, if I'm not mistaken. So number one is, you know, you have an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial mindset, you have a hustle, you have a desire to succeed, to provide value. So you kind of figured out what it is that you're doing from, as you say, nine to five, and then what you're gonna be, you're, what you're gonna be doing from five to nine, Number one, number two, is that you found a need in the marketplace, product market fit, because people need help rewriting their resumes because resumes now are going through these machines and everything's getting scanned and the keywords and you know there's, there's so much kind of confusion that people have. And then number three is that you figured out a way to generate demand by creating original content, by putting posts on LinkedIn, by offering free value, knowing that a lot of the people that are gonna take the free option might not have ever been a paid option, but you'll get that goodwill. And then by going through this whole process and documenting the process, you have a content calendar of information and content and videos that you can now post on LinkedIn to attract new clients. That's a perfect cycle that you created, a perfect machine. Did you think about that 
before you kind of kick this effort off or did the ecosystem just kind of build itself? So, you know, long before I was posting consistently on LinkedIn, that platform existed. Um, that there was already an ecosystem, so to speak, of you know millions of members signing up um, to do professional networking. So I guess I guess from that angle, I kind of grabbed onto the LinkedIn coattails for a second, you know, and and, and that has helped me on this ride. Mm -hmm. With that being said, I, you know, again, I, I kind of got into it by accident. I think there was a tipping point where I realized if you post authentic content, if you post things that are engaging, if you post things that your audience cares about, if you post things that will help someone solve their pain, not necessarily your pains, then that's, uh, that's a positive cycle. And I noticed like on that, um, that junior marketing specialist, you know, obviously that's satirical, you know, that it's meant to be funny, but one of the biggest things that, that surprised me about that post and that was really kind of a, a insight is when you go into the comment section, there is a number of professionals saying, Hey, like that took me about two thirds of the post before I realized it was a joke. So in other <laughs> words, there's, there's the, while it's fun, you know, it's meant in jest, it's, it's meant to be funny. It actually mirrors some of these years of you know experience required for a junior role. It's like it's like asking someone to have professional experience before they get to the internship, mm -hmm. uh, which, which is pretty pretty wild in my mind. Well, I mean, the reason why I really resonate to this post and to this content is because you just described me. <laughs> literally this post describes my skill like if you look at my resume which i haven't updated in a while and it's probably very bad but it, it's basically this like i've been on hudsot i've been on salesforce i've been on marketo i've been doing adwords i've been on all these platforms. <laughs> and and you know i say to myself you know my goodness that's true people are looking for tremendous amount of experience people that have learned so much through so much experience and guess what they don't want to pay a lot and they don't want to give the reward that that person deserves and they don't want to respect the process and what that person has to bring to the table so i think that kind of inherent selfishness is is a is a problem that we need to solve we need to figure out you know i also think that there's a massive correction that's happening right now because a lot of ironically enough i don't know if this was intentional but this post is about marketing automation Right. And I think what's happening is historically in, in marketing automation, it was, you know, demand generation, inbound generators that have all this technical experience that build these workflows up that work with all these folks, designers, writers, um, personalities, podcasters, and then they create this ecosystem of content to generate leads and ultimately sales. And I think that the break here and the, and the what I want to call the market correction here is that you actually don't need to have all this quote unquote talent. Now I feel like we're all empowered to do a lot of these things with simple technology for marketing automation, simple ways to create content, to create eBooks, to create videos, um, simple ways to deploy that, whether it's a drip email campaign or whether it's a social post on you know, LinkedIn. Now a lot of the playing field has been leveled out. So now all of us can become one of these high skill people. So I feel like there was like a secondary message that I kind of pulled from this post with respect to um, accessibility. So yeah, I just wanted to kind of throw that at you and get your feedback on that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So certainly like looking at the looking at the tech stack, if you will, there, you know, there's some, some of these fancier tools that, um, to be frank, you know, didn't exist decades ago. You know, part of the part of the 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 satire there is when you see a job posting and they list you know 10 years of experience 15 years of experience from a technology that didn't even exist back then i think i think hubspot was they uh they launched or they came to market like somewhere around 2006. yeah uh, i was gonna say 2007 no you're totally right yeah right around that time frame so when you really think about it like unless you're like a super I mean, super early adopter beta day one person who've used it every day since, which is going to be, you know, that that much of the market. 
for for the most part, those people don't exist, you know, except for a very, very small niche. So when you see these these types of job descriptions that have some frequency and regularity, where where you're asking for decades of experience, sometimes for an entry level role, it's it's kind of crazy, right? I do think nowadays, if you look at something like the HubSpot Academy, Ruben can go over there tonight and, and I've never used the platform before and upskill very, very quickly. I mean, that that ramp up can be like that when you start looking at all these kind of self-service tools, um, webinars, you know, uh, you know, hand-holding by a subject matter expert. Like, it doesn't take someone years to be good at it a HubSpot, a, a Salesforce, you know, insert platform here. And I think that just, that pushes the barometer even further in the sense that like, when you put up a job posting, you know, maybe you want someone really solid where they're, they've used it for a couple of years, but not decades, right? right. Well, I, I mean, I think the other hilarious part of the, about this is that to your point is that, you know, two notes here. Number one is that I, I got, a handful of HubSpot certifications in seven, a 72 hour period. I went heads down. I studied, every, I watched every single video. I studied every single course. And then I took all the exams and I passed them pretty well because I had been using the platform for a while. And all of a sudden I was HubSpot certified in, in a bunch of stuff, email and demand generation and inbound. And you know, that process was kind of interesting for me because I realized, well, not only is it a stamp on my resume, but you know, it's also it's kind of meaningless, you know, because if you don't know how to if you don't know how to develop a strategy, that's not really going to do anything for you. And guess what? Using the platform for 100 million years, that doesn't give you the experience. It's actually using it recently with the, the new world efforts, you know, in the right ways, because using HubSpot now versus using it, you know, seven years ago is, is very differently. So I just another kind of a note on this. I love what you said that, you know, the level of experience that people are looking for satirically doesn't exist, but it's also more relevant how recent that information is. You know, I'm always overly cautious when I put the number of, of years of experience that I have for a skill set because and I don't know if this is a thing about ageism, but I say, well, if I put 10 years, you know, I don't know. What if what if they say, oh, well, this person's going to, you know, sometimes that enters my mind. And I don't know if that's that's kind of a taboo topic, you know, ageism and hiring and whatnot. But, you know, these are things that enter people's minds like, oh, if this person has 10 year of his, years of experience, then they're going to want a ton of money. What if I get someone that's much younger, that's going to cost much less? So, you know, I'd love to understand your take on that, on sort of the reverse effect of putting that you have too much experience i.e. this person is going to be too overqualified or over expensive. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And there's there's a, a couple different things to unpack there so I can organize it all my, my Sammy brain. Um, you know, we'll put it all on the table. One is ageism is real. Um, so if someone sees 15 years of Hub, HubSpot experience versus two years for that hiring manager slash recruiter, they could go, oh, you know, you know, we just need kind of the, the core foundation. So if you go for this young person, you know, they, you know, we'll get them for cheaper and, and you know, they can learn. Man, when you were talking about, hey, you know, what have you done for me recently? You know, that's, that's something where I think there's the reverse where they could also think, and I just, you know, I just started percolating on this. Hey, um, this person, you know, that's young, you know, maybe they're, they're super sharp and they, by, by graduating college three and a half years ago, they've been jumped in head first into this new world of tools, you know, and maybe they're sharp. But I, I, I gotta be honest with you, Ruben, I can't tell you how many people I've talked to on LinkedIn and offline about, you know, they have this amazing skill set and it's proven, you know, they've proven it with metrics and results. And they say, Sam, I can't get a damn interview because because I have so much experience. Because I'm 15, 20 years into the game, even if I'm jumping into a new industry, I have a transferable skill set. But the second a recruiter sees my resume, LinkedIn profile, to get a, even with a referral, they're going, yeah, but they're going to be 30% more, 50% more than we want, want to pay. So 
in their head, they go, why, why am I going to burn you know, some valuable time talking to them? And I think that's, that's an unfortunate thought process. Um, but again, to your point, you know, you can, you can, you can unramp quickly. And the example I always use is, yeah, you know, certifi- knowing, like putting on your resume a, a certification about XYZ platform, that's not the same thing as actually delivering the results. I'm fortunate to, enough, I've run a couple marathons in my day, but I'll give you a personal Sammy Trimer guarantee. Running 26.2 miles is a different life experience and skill set than writing a book on how to run a marathon. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think that, you know, when it comes to, you know, marketing automation or, or building a workflow or, or knowing right. weekend inside out or sales enablement, I think that there is a difference between actually jumping, you know, getting into the weeds and right. delivering that versus you got you got one certification and now you're now you're a world class expert, but I've never delivered a single lead for a business. Mm. Interesting. Really interesting, man. So what has the process been like for you in terms of branding yourself on LinkedIn? What are what are some of the best uh, tips and tricks that you might present to us <laughs> i'm glad you asked um you know it's funny when when you think about um a stranger landing landing on your linkedin profile not only like a resume um or a a, a booth you set up at a live event they're going to want to see a complete profile um so i would i would start off with the nuts and bolts and the basics making sure you have a recent profile picture making sure you have a, a cover or banner photo that represents one of your passions um, or, or something with your industry for your headline. It doesn't have to be sales manager at XYZ Corp, marketing manager at ABC Foundation. It can be, you know, marketing leader or marketing leader that that delivers, you know, twenty thousand leads a year on average. It it can it can have some more meat to it. Um, so I would say, you know, this, the above the fold, the second someone hits your profile, make sure you have that stuff filled out. Uh, another best practice or tip I would say is in the summary, don't have it like one sentence where it's just, you know, again, you know, engineer at Facebook, right? Talk about your passions. Talk about some of your history. Talk about if you were to like wave a magic wand and describe a perfect work environment for yourself, what ingredients would that be in? You know, talk about the the, the podcast you launched, which is one of your favorite projects and, and how you built that that audience, how you built that brand, how you how you started from from ground zero there. So you can see there like on my profile, um, another best practice actually that remind me make sure you engage on the platform because when someone goes to your activity section, they're going to see all your past engagements there. You see there and about there, you know, I have a, a piece about my nine to five, but also a piece about my five to nine. Um, don't be afraid to actually post some past work examples, you know, from your, your current role or past roles on there. Um, when you publish articles, they'll come up there. So there, there's really, it's really about if, thinking about if a stranger or your future boss were to land on your profile, what's the, what are some meaty things that you can put on there that shows that not only are you posting stuff, but you're actually engaging with people. You know, a lot of time it's, it's not about, you, you don't have to have like a Hollywood production, you know, to, to, to green light a, a, a new LinkedIn post. You just have to have something that, you care about that your audience cares about uh, and be authentic you know they want they want to know the real Ruben they want to know the real Sam they want to know you know what what your real brand is and that that comes from being authentic and, and being consistent and, and really trying to engage with people at, at every turn mm. very cool man very educational uh, have you ever considered selling uh, LinkedIn bio writing in addition to resume rebuilds? Yeah, you know, it's funny. A past client of mine brought that up um, as 
as you know potential new service right now when, when someone buys a resume rebuild and any of the package they get like a free linkedin profile review mm. so i'll screenshot the entire profile and then i'll go into the pdf and actually put comments on each section section with with what my recommendations would be um it's up to this point on whether it's you know a security thing or a process thing i don't like i haven't actually received linkedin credentials to someone's profile and, and completely rebuild it myself the same way I can take a Word doc offline and, and literally build it, you know, from from the ground up. Um, it's, I think I think it's an interesting play. Um, and, and now that we're talking about it, you know, I, I'm percolating on it a bit more with with what the play would be there um, as as a value add. And someone says, "Hey, Sam, you know, you know, I, I created my LinkedIn profile yesterday. I'm I'm a busy person." what can you do to help me out nice nice man well i got a hundred bucks on it because i need a new right. bio so <laughs> <laughs> i haven't updated mine in a while uh, i will i will i will screenshot your bio and and, and take and take a, a, a dig <laughs> or or i we also offer uh you know subscription credits to dub our software platform that allows you to send videos a little shameless plug there uh, we got Donnie here, my seven-year-old son. On, on hey, the Donnie. What's and up, Donnie? We've got, oh, we've got the whole party here. What's up, D-Man? <laughs> What's up, D-Man? I like your shirt. Who's that? Whoa, who's this? <laughs> Papa, can you call Aiden and Karen? And What's up, guys? What's up, guys? Hey, we got the whole family here. <laughs> I like it. She's, the, the, she's two as of yesterday, and she totally looks it. Like literally overnight, she's like she's never waved like that on one of my on one of my calls. So what's up, she's do, maturing. What's up, do a crew, do a squad. <laughs> this is the do a squad. <laughs> so here's here's a question for you. Is we'll close out on this. Is some people are really scared to have a nine to five and a five to nine because when the boss sees it, conflict of interest. It looks like you're not focused on your nine to five. You know, it puts you on the, it might feel like you're putting yourself on the chopping block of job security. I'd like to get your take on that because it resonates with so many people right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So here's, here's the first thing I would say is when you have a side hustle, a five to nine, you are building your skill set without burning your employer's dime. So from a financial perspective and impact, zero dollars to your employer's budget and you are becoming a stronger marketer salesperson engineer podcast host you know it, without charging them so so you're adding value to your nine to five by having your five to nine uh we were talking about certifications earlier or just or just jumping in head first to a new platform that's a perfect thing to do on your five to nine you can jump in there and make mistakes and instead of it showing up on your employer's brand, it's showing up on your authentic personal brand, which means A, you're being real. You're saying, I don't have all the answers, but I'm learning every day and I'm upskilling. Again, another thing you can bring to your employer. And uh, third is I would throw out a consistently cited stat where when you graduate with your college degree, there there's many, many cases where when you in the middle part of your career, your end of the career, you won't be doing the same thing that you graduated with. So you can take your five to nine and start dabbling in it and start testing some of those transferable skills. If, if you are an actor and you wanted to be a, a software developer, how are you going to make that transition, right? If you, you could be super smart already, but maybe you're going to jump into some of those Coursera courses or some of those free MIT courses. Um, in, in upscale that way in, in, in get your feet wet. Um, so I think it's a real, it's a real value add to your employer. Totally understandable that I think in some of the old school settings, those legacy employers will go, Ooh, well, I don't know. Like, are they, are they paying attention? But if you keep it separate enough, you can do both um, and, and really excel in both. And, and you can take some of those insights that you learned offline and bring them online with your employer. And I think the, the new modern brands recognize that and they give you they give you enough runway where you can do both and you're measured based upon what you actually delivered and not when you're punching the clock. 
Nice, man. That's that's golden advice, man. I think a lot of people need to hear that. So where can people with uh, connect with you, website, LinkedIn, social handles? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, on both LinkedIn, uh, or I should say LinkedIn first, where it's just LinkedIn with slash my name. Um, Twitter, some uh, Instagram, uh, at FryingDog, F-R-Y-N-D-O-G. They're just half my last name and dog. Uh, if people want to email me, Samuel.Primer at gmail.com. I, I, re, I don't have an agency. I've got all my own social feeds and in my inbox. Um, so definitely hit me up. Nice, man. Thank you so much, Sam, for your time. Appreciate it. Hey, you got it. Hey, it was a real pre- pleasure, Mr. Dula. It was great seeing you. And it was also, also great seeing that Dula clan over there. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. Be good, brother. Bye-bye.